Hi everyone, this is DeFi Dad. This is gonna be a short follow-up to uh, a tutorial I did a few weeks ago on how to maximize earning comp by using Instadap. And Instadap is, uh, it's a dashboard that enables you to, you know, do lots of powerful things in DeFi that I think I would otherwise not be able to do uh, if it weren't for the fact that they've, they've built out these recipes or features to let you take advantage of uh, flash loans. And so what I did a few weeks ago is I started out with 100 DAI. I uh, lent it to Compound and I did that through the Instadap dashboard. So, so far nothing is special about that. However, then I used this maximize comp mining recipe. And what you're able to do is you're able to create a leverage position out of your stable coins. So what I did was I started with 100 DAI, I borrowed up to 200 DAI, or I'm sorry, up to 200 Tether, and in one block confirmation, all of this is happening within the 13 seconds or so, uh, that Tether gets swapped for DAI, and then it gets uh, lent or added to my collateral. And, and so I end up with, 300 DAI being lent, along with 201 Tether being borrowed. Now, earning comp has to do with how much I lend and how much I borrow in the different markets that are available on Compound. So I go from earning uh, the comp token, the comp governance token, based off of just lending 100 DAI, to now I'm lending 300 DAI and I've borrowed 200 Tether. And none of this would be possible without like this sort of a tool and taking advantage of flash loans. Uh, so. Uh, what's happened since then is compound uh, the, the DAO, including like everyone who has voting rights now because of this comp governance token voted to change the way that comp is being distributed and so they changed it so that it reflects borrowing demand. And that has boded very well for DAI. We went through a phase where a lot of the comp, you'll notice it says uh, it's comp per day. This updates every 24 hours. Uh, at first we noticed most of the comp was being allocated to the lenders and borrowers in the tether market. Then we went through a phase where it was going mostly to the uh, BAT token market. So you can see here total distributed. At this point uh, in time, uh, a little over 30,000 comp tokens have been distributed to BAT lenders and borrowers. Uh, in terms of the DAI market, it's only 12,000. And then 18,000 comp tokens have been distributed to the Tether market. So now DAI is you know, leading the race here in terms of those that are, are earning uh, the comp governance token, if they are a lender or, or, or a borrower. And this, this uh, number here, 2,258, if that's how many comp governance tokens are being supplied uh, or distributed to the lenders and borrowers in the die market, this is split 50-50 between the two. So it's about 1,130 comp tokens uh, to all lenders and to all borrowers. Another thing I have to think about in terms of the musical chairs of like where this comp is being distributed is what is the gross supply and then what is the gross uh, borrowed in this market? Because if 1,130 comp governance tokens are being distributed to die lenders, it matters how much have I supplied to the market here. So if I've only supplied, let's say, uh, 100 DAI or 1,000 DAI, that's 100 or 1,000 over 663 million. And then that, that's the proportion of the 1,130 comp governance tokens I'm earning. And all of this is happening automatically thanks to smart contracts. So uh, you know, all I have to do is focus on lending or borrowing. This then leads me to this uh, spreadsheet I've been polishing up and trying to make more and more accurate. Uh, all it really does is it takes into account, what is my collateral? How much is the gross supply in that market? What is my debt? What's the gross borrowed? What am I starting with? You know, in this case, let's pretend I start with 100 die again. 
And what is the price of comp? Because that dictates what are my actual profits. At the end of the day, like I'm earning that comp token. And if I'm borrowing, I might be accruing borrowing interest and then I need to be able to pay that back. When I put in a hundred uh, die, like I did a few weeks ago, I mean, this was meant to be a, you know, a simple example just to give everyone a sense of how you set this up. Uh, the thing about this is it, it's not a good example when you think about how much gas you're ultimately going to pay. And so when I look at, at this market, you know, if I put in a hundred die to start, I end up with, uh, this is after I do the maximize comp mining and take advantage of the flash loans feature in Instadap. I end up with 300 die lent and 200 die borrowed. And based on the numbers today, the 1,122 or 130 comp that's being distributed to lenders and borrowers in the die market with $185 comp price, I am earning a total of 14 cents per day. This would be if all of these rates stayed the same and if the gross supply and gross borrow remain the same. When you annualize that and multiply it by 365 days, I am earning, uh, I'm, I'm earning a, a daily annualized percentage yield of 45.3. So if you take, let's just double check this while I'm talking. If you take 14 cents and multiply by 365, I end up with uh, $51.10, 51.1 over 100, and then subtract away the fact that uh, subtract away the fact that there's going to be gas that's taken up in this. Uh, I, I end up with a little bit less than 50% annualized percentage yield. And by the way, this there's definitely some number here I'm not accounting for, but whatever. You, you, you get the point. Um, I'm averaging close to around 45.3% APY. That also assumes that I am losing maybe $15 in gas just to get into this position. You know, just to go here to Instadap, to supply to my, my DeFi smart account, my DSA, to supply uh, my 100 die, and then to go here and click on maximize comp mining, and set all this up, it's, it's probably gonna cost me about $15 of ETH. So at the end of my first 30 days, if all of that plays out, I, I end up losing money. And that's because that amount of gas is eating up what would be my profits. Uh, and so, you know, I could continue to, to work with this setup and, you know, obviously if, if rates remain where, they're, where they are, eventually, if I can keep earning the comp token, I'll, you know, come out ahead of this. But I think like the key takeaway for me here is that 100 die just isn't worth, you know, working with in this scenario. And so when I add instead 1000 to start, now I'm earning about $37 per month. Uh, that first month I lose again, 15. So it's about $22, but I, I'm still profitable. And you can see as you continue to amp this up, when you go from starting with 5,000, which transforms into 15,000 lent, 10,000 borrowed, if I follow that same maximize comp mining recipe and use similar ratios to keep me under a 75% liquidation, uh, now I'm earning 185 you know, per month. And that, anyways, these are, these are pretty awesome numbers. I mean, again, I, I base it off of what is the APY and I'm earning a, a great return at this point. The issue of course is whether or not someone has $5,000 that they can work with. Um, I just recognize that while there's others playing with large amounts of money, you know, I tend to think of like uh, more of the average person who's getting involved in DeFi and 5,000 is um, where I come from. That's, that's a lot of money for some. So what I wanna show you today are that there's a number of new uh, there's a number of new tools that have been released, and there's three of them here. Uh, I'm not going to walk through these and actually do them live because they can just simply be explained. First off, I have the ability now to import a compound position that I opened up on the compound platform, the compound portal at uh, app.compound.finance. 
I can import that into Instadap. So this is ideal for someone who uh, opened up, you know, their position lending, let's say on Compound, and then maybe they watched one of these videos I created and are, are realizing that they could make use of Instadap to maximize their comp mining. So that's one option. The next one is a debt swap. This is the one that actually applies to me. So I currently have debt in Tether. And if we go to the compound markets, uh, the market distribution here, you notice that the Tether market, the borrowers and lenders are only earning a combined 60.78 Tether versus the die markets. Now, I don't have enough money in here that would warrant me using this just because the cost of me doing uh, these flash loans is probably going to be, again, about $15 to $20 of gas, which completely, you know, blows away uh, what little profits I had made here. I think this is around like $5 if, if you take 185 times this in terms of the comp balance that I've earned. <clears throat> but if I had a lot more money in here, this could be a fantastic way to maximize my earnings. And so uh, my debt currently is 201.32 Tether. And I am looking to transform that into DAI because I want to, what, maximize uh, my money in the market that's earning the most comp. So I could put in here, you know, let's say 200, uh, which is a 200 die here would be equivalent to 202 tether. Just make sure I'm looking at that correct. Yep, there we go. So I end up borrowing uh, 200 die in terms of new debt. So I'm, I'm just switching. It's like musical chairs. I have tether right now as my debt and I'm switching it to, to die. And then uh, when I do this, my die, when I borrow the, the new die debt, it gets swapped to USDT or tether and then it pays back my, my tethered debt. So it, it erases one position and it opens a new position. So let's see if I were to move forward with this and actually swap my debt. It's gonna be one MetaMask transaction. And you can see here that with the gas price around 25 guay, I'm paying around $14 or $15 in Sorry, loud motorcycles outside. I'm paying about uh, $15 in gas, in ETH. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me. You know, that just completely eradicates any profits uh, that I might earn uh, just because I'm going to have to make up those losses. And, and this kind of reinforces the idea that uh, what I've done here as an experiment with 100 die is just not making sense because of the cost of these flash loans. And so I'm better off either not doing this or approaching this experiment with more money. And that goes back to that calculator I was showing where I, I put in a thousand die and, and that was uh, what allowed me to overcome the cost of, of these flash loans. Lastly is collateral swap. It's identical to the idea of this debt swap above. Uh, thankfully, my collateral is already in the die market, so I'm earning the maximum amount you know I could I could be earning here. But let's pretend if my current collateral was USDC, you know I could have done this then, and I would be. I, what would end up happening is I would withdraw my USDC collateral. It would get swapped or traded for DAI it would then pay back my USDC debt and I would now have uh, die as, as my collateral. So that, anyways, that's how that all works. And again, the reason I'm not using this because I already have, I already have die as my collateral. And according to the market distribution chart for how much comp is being earned by these different markets, this is the best place I could be right now. Before I go, here's just a few of the risks that I'm thinking about in terms of how I'm managing these instadept positions. Uh, top of mind is always, what is the borrowing interest that I'm accruing here through 
in my case, the tether market or whatever debt someone has. Maybe it would be DAI or USDC. I just want to make sure that if this rate ever jumps the borrowing interest, that I'm not accruing debt fast enough that my status or uh, the, the ratio of the debt I have to the collateral I have doesn't grow out of control and exceed 75%. Right now, my debt represents 66% of all of my collateral value. If I were to hit 75% because the borrowing interest goes up super, you know, sky high, and then uh, my tether debt is accruing faster and faster in terms of uh, it's growing faster, and then it's adding to uh, this this ratio, and it's it's gonna ultimately cause me to reach 75%, that would not be good. And that could lead to me being liquidated. <clears throat> Another thing I think that's just like a common human error would be for me to get confused by what these tools are. And I just, you know, I want to make sure that if I'm looking to swap my debt here from Tether to die, making sure that I am in fact using the debt swap. Um, just you know, making sure that I'm reading this and that I don't accidentally click on collateral swap and potentially cause myself some issues. Uh, let's see, another thing <clears throat> is uh, just being aware of how to exit this position. So you know, this is really important, the unwind comp mining. This is where I can go and say, my collateral is die, my debt is tether, and I want to go ahead and pay everything back. And so I would do 200, let's see here, 200, that's 202.81. So it actually could be a little bit less, like 100 and there we go. It's close to that. About 199 die will pay back all of my debt and it'll bring me back down to a status of zero, which will then uh, mean that I, I will end up with, not with 300 die, um, I'll end up with 98.79 die in this case. So that's another thing I want to be aware of. Um, of course, just managing you know, custody of my assets. If I lose access to my MetaMask or my wallet, I won't be able to access any of this. There's also smart contract risk to think about with both Instadap and Compound. Uh, I have the option of, of going to nexusmutual.io and I can buy protection uh, for both Instadap and Compound if I'd like to do that. Uh, I, th I think also another risk then to consider is uh, the governance risk. So I think the way that rights are delegated to comp holders, I'm not worried about this at the moment, but obviously I'd be concerned if uh, somehow someone gained enough control of the comp token that they were able to overcome what is supposed to be a sound decision by the community about upgrades and proposals to, to the compound uh, protocol. So that's really it. Um, I hope you find this helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and you know, if there's any, any like major takeaway from this, I think it's that if, if, if I am able to navigate these recipes and make use of Instadap to create a leverage position out of stable coins, one thing I can potentially take advantage of since DAI and USDC both have a collateralization factor of 0.75, Tether currently has zero. I couldn't actually collateralize Tether and then borrow against it like this. Um, I could be potentially now swapping between these two markets. And uh, I could also be doing that with Ether. I think my only concern there then is uh, with Ether, it's a volatile asset. And so there's a greater likelihood that I could get liquidated versus using a DAI or USDC as, as my collateral.